Well, well, well. Hell in the cell. They they try to pull it off again. And for the most part, hold on. Uh, for the most part, they kind of did. They did kind of try to pull off a WrestleMania backlash where knowing that the makeup for the fact that we did have both the women, the SmackDown women's title, the uh, the uh, the unified the tag title or Roman's titles on the line. They try to make up for it by having by putting on spectacular uh, matches, and for the most part, they did. But unlike WrestleMania Backlash, there was some there was a few faults where because okay for me WrestleMania Backlash it surprised me because I enjoyed every match. I didn't enjoy every match on this card, um, but I'm about to get into the review. I just noticed that I I call myself. I'll be I'll be met I'll be trying to call myself the tribal chief to y'all. I'm like, wait a minute. I only got one title. So I think I have to, I'm gonna have to go on WWE shop and buy me a uh, buy me the War Heritage. I don't want the universe. I'm not buying the universal title. I, you would never see me with the universal championship just because it's it's to me the concept of the fact that the universal championship is just is this but Instead of saying WWE World Heavyweight, it says Universal at the bottom and it's just blue or red. I'm not going to buy, I, I, it's just the same title as this. I want my title to be different, my next title to be different. So, I'm going to buy the World Heavyweight Championship so I can have, so I can be double champions for you guys. But, that's just a little side note. Anyway, back to the uh, review. So, they, um... Uh, the ongoing story here, they announced before the show even started that Cody Rose was injured, that he had some type of injury, and then they would keep they would update us later on the show. To which they did say he had a a, a tore a tore pectoral muscle, which means he which means like this whole it was like his whole right side, like on his it was on his right side. But I get to that later. Cause now it's better if I say it in the context of the uh, match. Um, the first match they started off with, which was the triple threat for the Raw Women's Title, and I also want to point out before I just realized, because I was about, I had said Raw. If you haven't seen this pay per view yet, expect that this is a dominant Raw pay per view, and I'm gonna get to why I say that because it, this was like a little, it was almost unintentionally a callback to how the original brand split. Was uh with wet, but yeah, it's a dominant. I say dominant raw pay per view because it was only one SmackDown, uh, and that was a problem. But Becky Lynch versus Oscar versus um Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's Championship, um, and this was a, a phenomenal, great way they, they put on a phenomenal match, great match. And, and I actually agree with uh, with people when they said this is actually a candidate for match of the year. Yeah, pretty. It could be because this was a phenomenal match. It was it was not bad. It was phenomenal. Um, near falls at the near fall. The, the I think you could say the best part was Oscar's barrage of strikes that she did. That little exchange she had with Becky Lynch that was awesome. But um. After near falls, after near falls, Becky Lynch introducing the concept of trying to get, uh, trying to get the pin off of somebody else's uh, move, uh, you know, or somebody else's uh, handiwork. That would be that would prove to be Becky Lynch undoing as she hit the manhandle slam on Oscar for, for and she was gonna it, obviously it was going to be for the win because Oscar was done. And but in, in Becky Lynch fashion, Bianca. Threw Becky Lynch out of the ring and took the pin, retaining the title. Um, it was, that it was good storytelling, and I'm actually honestly to see the more there's more of Becky Lynch where she's now she's really don't have a path now. Now she lost another opportunity to regain the title, which I realized which they should be doing with Omas. I mean not Omas. I, I looked at my paper and saw Omas. I meant to say Roman. Um, but that is speaking of Omas, that's the next match on the card, which is Omas versus uh Omas and MVP versus Bobby Lashley in a two on one handicap match. Um 
There was like a backstage segment with Cedric, Cedric Alexander. He tried trying to come up with a plan with uh with MVP and uh, Omos, but MVP telling him like, "Look, I gave you chance, had a chance to prove yourself, and you failed." The uh, hurt business would never be back. It's gone, dead. Just get over it. And Omar's doing it once again. Telling him it's time for you to go. And uh, 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 Cedric is like, okay. And he he walked away. Um, but the match itself was okay. I want to say it was it, it it was it was hard to follow that follow that first match that they the, they set the bar. The ladies did set the bar, and it was hard to follow that. And it almost versus almost an MVP versus Bobby Lashley really didn't was 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 it going to be able to? And it didn't. But it was still an okay match. Not going to say it was bad. I, I was this a match I care for? Yes. I ain't gonna say I didn't. Cause that that out there of not care for a match would come later. But this match it was okay. You know they had his spot. Cedric the Zedder did uh, still came out to the ring, but instead of helping MVP, he uh, he inadvertently helped Bobby Lashley, and, uh, which allowed Bobby Lashley to get the uh, get the victory here. Uh, also, there was a backstage segment where Bobby Lashley confronted uh, Seth Bidger about that, but instead like not in the angry fights, he was just surprised, you know and. Uh, and Cedric, you know, told him like, "I didn't do that for you. I did that for me because he's he thanks to M what MVP said earlier. He's tired of trying to find his place, and that you know maybe he ne he needs to do what he got to do to find where he to find his own place instead of trying to fit in somewhere." And, uh, you know, and uh, Bobby Lashley told him that's good. Is you need you need to stand up for yourself around here, but. Don't interfere in my matches again. In a light, in a light heart, not in an aggressive tone, but in a light heart, like almost like little brother tone. Um, now we will get to a match I really didn't care about. Um, KO versus Ezekiel was the next match, and um, it was okay. The match, the match itself was okay. I won't say I give credit to when credit is due. The match itself was okay, but I, I just not. I just wasn't into this. Other than the comedic part, you know, Kevin always, always keep, every time he hears somebody say Ezekiel, he keeps saying Elias was, was like, he was like the, I guess you could say the shining star, because he, he carried it with the comedic part of it. And then, but the match itself was good for both wrestlers, but it just, I really, could, I really didn't care about the story that much. But I do know Kevin Owens won. With a stunner yelling at him and calling him Elias, and then looking at the camera saying Elias, that was funny. But KO won the match. Um, we got the then we got a match I did care about, which was AJ Styles, Finn Balor, and Liv Morgan versus Judgment Day. And this was a great, I want, well, this was a good ta uh, uh, six man tag, mixed tag match. And it, it, it was good. I was thrown off because. They have obviously it's a pay per view, so everybody will have a unique pay per view uh, attire. Um, and I, I did. I, I love the attire for Damian Priest and Edge. I was thrown off by this new attire they had Rhea Ripley uh, wearing. I was just like, "What the hell do they got her wearing?" It's, and it was just, it was it was sim almost similar to not similar to Liv Morgan, but it was just she had similar bottoms. To Liv Morgan, I, I should say she didn't have she they she didn't have on no pants she didn't have on pants she had on like wrestler bottoms like Liv Morgan and like all her leg and leg tattoos and stuff was exposed. I just never we never seen her dressed like that before. But it was it was cool, and the thing I realized too was that I start I didn't realize it until then when I looked at Rhea. They be making they be making people like uh, Rhea and Dana Brooke lose their muscle to look more feminine because Rhea was big. 
Rhea used to be big, and now she's like she kind of lost her muscles a little bit. And Dana Brooke used to be uh, a bit a little bit bigger too, and she lost her mother. Mandy Rose, they did that. They even did it with Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose used to be a little bit bigger than she than she is now, and she they lost her muscles. I'm just like, why did, why y'all do that? Because I actually liked them better that way because they looked at they were supposed to be powerhouse women. Like uh, Mandy Rose was supposed to be a powerhouse uh, wrestler. She was supposed to wrestle with strength, and so was uh, so was Dana Brooke and um, Rhea Ripley. But I get off I get off track. The match itself was good. It had some spots. AJ Styles got busted open. Um, uh, Rhea paying dividends to Judgment Day interfering one too many times. A lot of a lot of edge to spear fan battle for the victory. Um, there was no new member, so there was a little bit of dis disappointment there, but it was still, it was good. It was good enough to just be, just be like, okay, no new member, but hopefully we'll see that down the line. Um, we got Barry Corbin versus Moss, another match I don't really care about. Uh, but the only SmackDown, that was the only SmackDown match. This is why I said this was a dominant Raw pay-per-view, because... The only match on the card of SmackDowns was this. Every match was a Raw card. And for those who don't know, when the original concept of the brand split was that not only was the brands uh, split into two, two different entities competing against each other, they're also the uh, pay-per-views were split. You all you have you had a pay-per-view which was only for Raw superstars, and then the pay per view, the pay per views that was only for SmackDown superstars. And sometimes they were, in, sometimes they would, uh, they would like switch off like Backlash. One year Backlash would be a SmackDown uh, pay per view. Then one year Backlash would be a Raw pay per view. It always switched sometimes, but they did, they did, they did away with that concept. That's why people, that's what started people to think that the brand split was going to end because they did, they did away with the whole. Um, split um, pay-per-views. But, that's to say that this match, I really did, I were talking about that, the fact that this match, because the match, I really didn't care about it. it they looked at, Barry Corbin and Moss looked at good, for the most part. Moss, they really pushed in Moss, and Moss got the victory here. Um, yeah, I just, I couldn't really, I couldn't get into it, I'm sorry. There's nothing more I can say about it, because I really wasn't into it. Um, we got the next, uh, uh, we got another match I really wasn't into, which was um, Austin Theory versus Mustafa Ali for the United States Championship. The only other title that was on the line um, in this pay-per-view. And it was, it was okay. I mean, I, it, it was, it, it was a little bit better than the Bear Corbin versus uh, Riddick Moss, but it, it was just, I, like, I really wasn't invested into it because you knew, even with the hometown pop behind Mustafa Ali, even him wearing the uh, the uh, the stars of the Chicago, uh, and, you know, and uh, almost similar to like CM Punk's uh, guard, uh, you know, garb and stuff, it just, it, it wasn't working. I couldn't, I enjoy, I did enjoy the, uh, the crowd being behind Mustafa Ali, but you knew he wasn't about to beat Austin Theory, and that's exactly what happened. Austin Theory, they had a good match with Austin Theory, ended up winning and retaining the championship. So, with that being said, we get to the main event, uh, which is Seth Freaking Rollins versus Cody Rhodes in a hell in a cell match, and that match was was up in the air because we didn't know what was going to be the status of Cody Rhodes. And we didn't know if this was this was just part of a, a shoot, a work. We didn't know this was real or fake. Turns out it was real. Cody Rose really is injured. And um, according to Wrestle Talk and stuff, it was explained that if Cody Rose only partially tore his pec, his pec muscles, uh, his pec muscle, they wouldn't allow him to compete because it was still damage that could have been done. But because he completely tore it, uh, he it says he complete, uh, completely tore the muscle off the bone. He was able that they allowed him. That's why he was able to compete. And at, in real life, he was only able to compete because the muscle was tore off the bone, and 
they said thus, I guess when it's tore off the bone like that, there's no more damage that can be done. It's just going to be really excruciating painful for him to wrestle. And it's just going to be excruciating pain, but it can't do no more damage than it's already been done. So he was allowed to complete, compete, the match, uh, compete in the match. And you, and you and you saw the bruising and the swelling. His whole, his, the, the what his the piece of his right side and arms was swelled up and it was purple. I was like, holy crap! But they put on a fantastic match. The match was good. The match was good. It was fantastic. It was every bit the the end the real the fact that he bow, he's battling with a real life injury on display. That like the that the best one of the best parts was before the match even started when he when he took off his uh, home leather jacket as they as people like to call it and revealed the injury. The crowd went silent because people that's when people realized I was like oh my god it's real. He really is injured. Holy crap. And, and the crowd was just silent because they didn't know what to think of it. It was like, he really is injured. And then they put on a fantastic match. Cody, uh, Seth Rollins came out dressed as Dusty Rhodes. Tried to throw Cody Rhodes off his game. But Cody Rhodes, put, they had an amazing match. And it was a good match. And Cody Rhodes ended up taking the victory here. Um, unfortunately, because the injury is real... Cody Rose will be gone for some time to get surgery and recover. Um, so, with that being said, this uh, this Hell in a Cell, despite being despite being having like what, maybe was, I'm gonna say one, two, three good matches. Yeah, they had they put on three excellent matches, and the rest of the match was either okay to I didn't care. Um, this gets a six out of ten big ups. I was gonna give it a seven because for the for the first three matches, but then I'm like, you know what? No, because it's it's still even though I would say this, having one SmackDown match on the card is a problem to me. It's the reason why I give it a six because you only have one SmackDown match on the card. No raw. You you. This was basically a raw dominant card. Which in this in this case, Mad Cat versus uh, Baron Corbin, or that could have that could have been just an episode of SmackDown. You could have just let this be a dominant Raw pay per view, which you couldn't because they, it would it would have been like you would it would have been like before. You have to explain why this whole match card was a SmackDown. I mean, a Raw card instead of having a SmackDown match, but. It was just, I was just like, yeah, the fact that you only had one SmackDown, it was only two titles defended, and still not even an appearance by the Bloodline to tease what's coming up next, to tease that they're going to be on Monday Night Raw. What the hell are you guys doing? This is this is by far the worst decision you ever could have made. By you, At this point, the story, to me, and I, say, I think I said this in one of my... I think I said this in my Friday Night SmackDown review. When this started, I was intrigued where they was going to go with this. But then the fact that he got like a part-timer uh, contract and the lack of appearances. Now, if he appears on uh, Monday Night Raw, that means he only been gone for two weeks. Yeah, he, may, he finally made an appearance. But if he don't appear tonight, and then... But appears on SmackDown, you know, it's just been two weeks and a couple of days. But he doesn't appear at all this week. That's three weeks. That's horrible. This is worse than they brought Lesnar because now both both souls don't have a, a top title. I'm, I'm rambling. Um, I'm start. I'm sorry. I started rambling, but yeah, you get my point. It's horrible because both souls don't have a champion, and I was intrigued. I went from being intrigued about the story to this is the best, worst decision ever for both the SmackDown. T uh, the SmackDown Raw tag team titles and the main titles. But you let me know in the comments down below what you thought of Hell in a Cell. If you enjoyed this review, you hit this button right there in the upper right corner for all of my WWE reviews. And if you enjoyed this review so, so much, you want to support the channel, all you got to do is hit that like, subscribe, share, hit that notification button. Do all those great things because your tribal chief says so. Also, hit that thanks button and uh, hit that join button if you want to see my full episode reactions to 
Well, your favorite shows. And that's always here. You want your videos for more amazing content, but the Golden Word got episode two review coming up for the boys.